Hey, my name is Josh, and today we're going to be talking about the Mica MB42XCs. This is the crossover unit of their center channel. I'm actually going to review this as a stereo setup. Full credit to Z for giving me that idea, by the way. Now, right before we get started, I want to send a huge thank you to Mica for actually sending these out for review, as well as their RB42s, which I'm thinking about having a comparison before I actually do the official full review of the RB42s, which is coming. So all in all, this is a lightweight, easy to drive, vinyl wrapped MTM speaker. So the immediate question is why get these over like the standard MB42 model, which is kind of about that height and it's about $80 a pair and it doesn't come with the second woofer. It just comes with the tweeter and the other mid woofer, but they are active and you don't have to buy a separate amplifier, separate cables to power them. And really the only place that I really recommend this over that is actually going to be places where you want or use or need a lot of volume. Because as great as those MB42s are, especially for the money, they just can't produce a good sound at a high volume in a medium sized room. So at a desk, I actually probably recommend those. Now I will leave a link below where you can check that out because those are fantastic speakers for the cost. This produces just about the same sound signature to my ear, except it's just bigger and louder. So what that general sound signature is like, it's a little light at the top end of treble, but overall you're getting very crisp and clean treble performance. You're getting dead center vocals that have a good amount of body, although not a huge amount of depth and girth and kind of grunt behind them. In fact, if there was one complaint from Micah about the MB line, it was going to be that low end, which this has some mid bass, but when you get into the sub bass regions, there's really not a whole lot here. But these stand in a weird place, especially with the introduction of the RB42s, which are another similar to this passive speaker. Now, lucky for consumers like us at the same price as buying two of these with the crossover, I believe the RB42 actually already has a crossover in it, but they really address the lacking low end of the MB42 line though at a price premium. Now imaging is going to be one of the stronger points of just about every mica that I've tried. And for the price, even like 10 feet apart, these can present a really tack sharp image, especially when you get into somebody who has a really clean, really great recording, like the album I reviewed yesterday, which is the Yossi Hirokawa Spaces album. There's a link down below if you do want to check out that Music Mondays video. I really enjoyed making it. Now sound staging on a horizontal plane is very good. Um, although when it comes to the three dimensional depth and the holographic nature of some speaker soundstage, like the RB42, for example, this falls a little bit behind. It doesn't really quite have that real deep feeling to it. Now, when it comes to, you know, a vertical soundstage, like a height or a largeness to the sound, this really doesn't have it either. Um, and I suspect that comes with the bass response not being uh, what I would consider to be significant. And hooking a sub up to it actually takes care of that vertical soundstage issue. And it kind of becomes more of a broad approach to the sound. And with the sub hooked up, I think these are in their ideal circumstance. And so this model right here originally was the MB42C. And then Micah also sent their little crossover unit that I personally installed and compared with. Now at low or medium listening volumes, there's not a strong noticeable difference for me. When I really noticed it was the larger listening volumes and it seemed to maintain a level of clarity and detail that the non crossover version wasn't able to attain. So here's where the kind of mix of recommendations comes in. If you don't have a crossover version, they're coming at $50 a piece, $100 per pair. So when it comes to the desk close environment, I am still gonna recommend the MB42s, the standards, or maybe the MB42X, but not the center channel, simply because it's just a better deal. It comes with the power, it comes with the cables, and you really don't have to have anything extra like you do with this model, and you're getting just about the same sound. Now, where the MB42 separates itself from those smaller models is the integrity of everything at higher volumes. But the problem with that is that you'll want the crossover version, which brings you up to $70 a piece, which brings you up to 140 a pair, which is just about the same price range that the RB42s are at. And the RB42s have everything that this has, plus more bass. And it's just kind of hard for me to recommend because it's kind of stuck in between two categories that are, I think, appropriately priced. The RB42s sound better than what they cost, and the MB42s sound better than what they cost but neither kind of compete directly with each other, especially in the price range. So they're separated there. This is kind of somewhere in the middle for capability, uh, but the price is up here and it just doesn't match that. Now, fairly enough, I'm kind of forcing this into the comparison of a stereo and calculating for twice these. 
These are not marketed as a stereo speaker. These are marketed as a center channel, but that's not really Micah's fault or responsibility. It's kind of my fault for forcing it into that bottlenecked scenario there. So I guess that's gonna wrap it up. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that if you were looking into these, perhaps I provided more use case insight. And uh, let me know if you want a comparison between the MB42XCs and the Micah RB42s. Until the next video, thank you very much again for watching. My name is Josh, signing off. <laughs>